if I'm a hacker and I get onto your network, if I can see that your DNS database is a certain type, like a primary zone, I can blast it with millions of bogus records. Now listen, everybody. Let me just explain something for any of you that don't know much about hacking. If you watch a lot of movies and, you know, you see these people in these movies sitting behind a computer typing in passwords and getting rejected and typing in passwords and trying to break encryption. And, okay, that's great, but that's all crap. Everything today is done with software. You literally just initiate a piece of software and the software does everything. I showed you last week about how easy it is to crack passwords. It's two pieces of software. It does all the work for you. If I want to create bogus DNS records and I want to cause your network to have a problem, it's not like I'm going to sit there and build bogus records. I'm going to kick off a piece of software that's just going to send your company millions of bogus records until DNS goes down. Now, how else can DNS go down if it's a non-hacking issue? Microsoft. Microsoft, when they put out updates, they've been kind of known for their updates to cause problems. He loaded an update. As soon as that update got loaded, DNS went down. But here's the thing. They didn't even actually load the update. It was set up to just auto-deploy. They had no idea it was even happening in the background. All of a sudden, they're just at work talking, da -da 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 -da, and the whole network's down. Because as soon as the update hit the box, it took DNS down. Okay? Bogus records, a corrupt database, running out of hard drive space, uh, files getting fragmented, all of those things can cause DNS to crash. It's actually not that hard. DNS is an open running database. By the way, just to let all of you know, in case you don't know this, you'll hear the terms DOS attack. A DOS attack is a denial of service. The object here is basically to deny somebody from using something, a denial of a service. So if this was DNS and I'm the hacker, as I attack your box, I'm trying to cause a DOS attack. If I'm doing damage, a lot of hackers when they attack will just go in to steal. They're not gonna take it down, they're just gonna grab stuff. But on a DOS attack, they're literally trying to crash that box. They're trying to cause you problems. Now, you may also hear the term, which is even worse, DDOS attack. It's the same thing, except this is a distributed denial of service attack. And that usually means the hacker's got multiple boxes going after you. All right, so if I want to take down your DNS server, all I got to do is kick off a piece of software that just sends bogus records at your box. And depending on how your box accepts or rejects messages, I'm going to overwhelm you until you go down. And this is one of the easiest attacks. Because you know what? All I have to do is be able to get the message to DNS. Any message, any computer that tries to register with DNS, depending on how your settings are, if they're set a certain way, any computer can register, including computers that don't belong to your company. Let me explain how that works. Okay. Years ago, we had a server that we all used called WINS. Now, WINS was name resolution, same as DNS except that it did a different type of name resolution. WINS did NetBIOS names. DNS obviously does host names. NetBIOS names were names that didn't have a period. There was no .com, no .gov, no .edu. It was just the name of the computer, Server 3. There were no periods. There were no, it was just a single name format. Microsoft wanted WINS to be the world standard for name resolution. All right, they wanted WINS to literally replace DNS in the world. And if you think I'm lying, look at the name. WINS 
all right, WINS stands for Windows Internet Naming Service. WINS was never on the internet. WINS was a Microsoft thing only in the internet's Unix. WINS couldn't even be on the internet as a working back then. Okay, so Microsoft wanted WINS to replace DNS. They wanted to be the master of name resolution. Well, obviously, the industry shot that down, and we ended up sticking with DNS. But here was one of the great things about WINS. You didn't have to do anything as an IT person. Literally, with WINS, all you had to do was point somebody to the WINS server, and they would automatically register themselves with the WINS database. This was a new thing. Back then, whenever you built a database, you had to build these databases yourself. There were no databases that were dynamic that built themselves. WINS did. DNS did not. The only way to work on DNS was to basically build the database. Okay, when Microsoft announced that DNS was going to be the new industry standard, they made changes to DNS so that you didn't have to build the database. This is what we call dynamic updates. Now, all you have to do is point a client to the DNS server. As soon as you give the client the IP address for that DNS server, they become a DNS client. It's as simple as that. How do you make uh, somebody a client of a DNS? You just give them the IP address of the DNS server. Once you do that, they're now a DNS client. Now, somehow you have to tell DNS that they're there. You either have to go in and manually build a record for that computer, or you're going to allow that computer to automatically register with DNS, like Wind used to do. Here's the problem with primary zones. You either have to accept all updates or none. There's no middle ground. It's either turned on or turned off. If it's turned on, you accept all updates. And that also includes anybody who can contact that machine even outside of your network. If this DNS server right here is a primary DNS server and it has dynamic updates turned on and I am a hacker, that's how I'm going to blast you and do a DOS. If you were wondering, how does a hacker actually do a DNS? Uh, I'm sorry, a DOS attack? That's it. Once I hack and get enough information and find out that your DNS server is a primary zone and you're just accepting all updates, I'm going to send you millions of updates. Okay? I will send you millions of updates until I crash you. The problem with a primary zone, the problem with a primary zone, is that when you're talking about dynamic updates, it's either on or off. You cannot put any security on dynamic updates. And also, because the primary zone is stored locally on this box as a flat file, and that flat file can be opened because there's no encryption, primary zones basically offer you absolutely no security. And that's on the database and updates. And that's uh, dynamic updates. Because usually when you say updates, people think of the operating system. So. so there's no security on the database and no security on any way of doing dynamic updates. 